Before you take the stand, please face me and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it. Very good. Go ahead and take a seat and pull the microphone down to you. Sir, would you tell the jurors your name, please, and spell your first and your last name so we have it correctly in the record? Philip Kidd, P-H-I-L-I-P. Last name's Kidd, K-I-D-D. What do you do for a living, sir? I'm a police officer with the University of Cincinnati. How long have you been a, a police officer, officer for the Cincinnati Police Department, University of Cincinnati Police Department? Ten and a half years. And uh, what position uh, do you currently hold there? I'm a patrol officer. And, uh, were you a police officer before coming to the University of Cincinnati Police Department? I was not. Okay. You have to go through some training, uh, just like any police officer around the state? Yes, sir. And complete all the OPATA required training? Yes. If I could direct your attention back to July the 19th of last year, 2015, were you working on that day? I was. And could you tell us what the nature of your duties were? I was uh, patrolling and training Officer Lyndon Schmidt that day. Okay. Are you what's referred to as a, uh, uh, a, an officer, tra officer in training? What's the title you use? FTO, Field FTO training, training Officer. officer. And you were doing that at the time? I was. All right. And uh, your officer in training would have been uh, David Linden Schmidt? Yes, sir. He was a relatively new officer at that time? He was. And what did your, the duties uh, that you uh, uh, involved in entail? Uh, patrolling campus, Clifton area, um, traffic stops, pedestrian stops, answering radio runs, that kind of thing. Right. What time did your shift start with Officer Linden Schmidt? Uh, 1,500 hours. So 3 p.m. for us civilians? Yes. Okay. And who was driving the vehicle? Officer Lyndon Schmidt. Was it an SUV type vehicle? It was. On that date of uh, July 19th, did you know someone named Ray Tensing? Yes, sir. How did you know Ray Tensing? He was an officer with the University of Cincinnati. And is he here in court today? He is. Can you identify him for the jurors? He's seated there. In the center of uh, counsel? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Was uh, Officer, Tensing, Officer Tensing also working on July the 19th? He was. Was he working with someone or was he working alone? He was alone. And were his duties that day the same as yours, a patrol type? Yes, sir. Duties? Was he also in a, a marked University of Cincinnati uh, Police Department SUV? He was. Now, uh, were you able to commute direct, uh, communicate directly with Officer Tensing? We typically go through dispatch. We don't go car to car. You're not talking car to car, but you can hear communications he has with dispatch? Yes. All right. Sometime around 6.30, did you hear a, uh, a communication Officer Tenzing made to uh, dispatch? Uh, I'm not sure of the time, but yeah, uh, traffic stop. Okay. And did he indicate where he was and, uh, and where uh, the traffic stop was going to be made? I believe he said he was going south on Vine. Okay, you familiar with that area? I am. Do you remember where you were when you uh, heard that dispatch from Officer Tenzing? I believe we were on Calhoun Street. Calhoun? Would it be Calhoun or Quarry or are you absolutely... There's there a block over there. Okay, so in that area? Yes. That's on campus, is that right? Uh, Quarry's on campus. Calhoun is one block south of campus. Okay. And uh, what were you doing at that location? Uh, we had just finished up a traffic stop. So you're finished. There was nothing that was going to hold you or require you to stay at that location. Is that correct? Correct. Was there anything you heard in Officer Tenzing's uh, broadcast uh, that made you decide you would want to drive over to back him up? Uh, when he said that the vehicle was slow to stop, okay. then we decided to head his way. And you didn't have to request permission. You weren't involved in another stop, so you can just go in that location? Correct. What is the significance of that communication that you heard, slow to stop? What does it mean to an officer and why did you decide to go over that way? Typically when we uh, initiate a traffic stop, we like to pick the location, um, you know, well lit. Um, it's uh, safer for the officers, for the, for the uh, subjects in the vehicle. Um, when they don't stop, when we first turn on the lights, uh, they tend to travel for a distance. It, it gives us an indication that maybe they're going to try to run or, you know, maybe there's alcohol involved, 
you know, something's not right. Okay. When you make a, a stop of a vehicle and it's slow to stop, does it make you on heightened alert? It does. Does it make you feel like you should be a little more cautious or a little more aware of what's going on with that car? Yes. Okay. So tell us the route you took from where you were on either uh, Calhoun or Quarry to where you next uh, came in contact with Officer Tenzing. I believe we went down Ohio um, onto McMillan and then down Vine Street onto Phil. Okay, so you've been going down the hill toward the city? Yes. And you would have turned left on Phil? Yes. Does that take you up a hill uh, as you go up Phil? Uh, no, I believe it's pretty flat right okay. there. Okay. You pass a street called, I think it's Loth Street? I don't know the okay. name of the street there. Uh, what When you get to the top of Phil, is that Rice Street? Yeah. And Phil dead ends at, at that location, does it not? It does. So the only way you can go at that point is to turn right onto Rice? Correct. And is that that location where you saw Officer Tenzing? Yes. All right. And did was the vehicle that he had sent out that communication about, was it pulled to the side of the road? It was. And where was Officer Tenzing when you saw him? He was standing next to the vehicle at the driver's side. Okay. Where on the driver's side? Next to the window. Okay. Let me ask you this. What's the, what's the B post or the B pillar? That's the area just behind the uh, driver. As part of your training, are you taught to stand instead of right next to the driver, further back by the B pillar or the B post? Typically, yes. Why do you do that? Um, it gives you a safer vantage point if the uh, driver were to pull a weapon or something. Okay, so you're slightly behind him? Yes. As opposed to being right next to him? Yes. Okay, so you're safer if he pulls a weapon, you're safer if he tries to drive off. Are those all reasons to be by that B pillar? Uh, I don't know about the driving off part, but certainly for a weapon. All right. When you make a traffic stop as a, a police officer with uh, several years of experience, do you try to stand by the B pillar rather than be right next to the officer? I do. Do you know where Tenzing was at, as you pulled up uh, to this stop in relation to that B pillar? I believe he was a little in front of the B pillar. Okay. Now, was this area on Rice Street where this um, um, stop was made, uh, was it on campus? It was not. That's not a problem, is it? No. As a UC University of Cincinnati police officer, you permitted to patrol in the adjacent areas of the city of Cincinnati that are, are around campus, correct? Not just permitted. We were directed at that time. Okay. And, that, and in fact, there was a memorandum of understanding between the UC, uh, University of Cincinnati police and the C Cincinnati police department to both patrol those areas. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't a problem to go off campus. This was a normal routine. It was. Okay. Now, as a University of Cincinnati police officer, there are certain policies and practices uh, that you're required to follow. Is that correct? Yes. Every officer is charged with the duty of, uh, of knowing what those are and following them. Am I right? Yes. Okay. When you patrol off campus, those policies and procedures aren't rescinded, are they? They remain in effect and you have to to follow them even though you're off campus? Correct. Okay. This location at the stop was made on Rice Street. Does it fall within the city of Cincinnati? It does. Uh, I think that would be, what, would you call it Mount Auburn? Yes. Okay. That fall within Hamilton County in the state of Ohio? It does. All right. As you pulled up, where did, did you direct uh, Officer Linda Schmidt where to stop the car you were riding in or he'd just do it himself? I believe he did it himself. Where did you where did you pull? Where did you come to rest? Behind Officer Tensing's car. So looking ahead, you had you were in an SUV. Yours was an Explorer. I, I believe we were in a Tahoe. A Tahoe. Okay. And then was T Officer Tensing's uh, Explorer, which uh, vehicle, which was an Explorer SUV. Yes. Okay. And then in front of that was the car that was stopped. Yes, sir. When you first pulled up and you're sitting in the car, what is your view? Of, uh, of the car and of Officer Tenzing? Um, I could see a little bit over the SUV. I was off to the right. I believe we were off at an angle a little bit. Because you're just coming around the turn? Correct, so okay. I can see around the vehicle. Okay, but you can't see Officer Tenzing's entire body, can you? I cannot. Because the vehicle he was uh, had approached, uh, he was on the driver's side of that, and you guys would have been behind and on the passenger side, am I right? I would have been, yes. Okay. And what would you have seen as you look forward? How much of Officer Tenzing could you see? 
t the top part of them. Okay. So from how far up? Chest up? Uh, maybe I don't know. Stomach area, maybe the waist. Okay. <coughs> Did you see Officer Tenzing have anything in his hand as he stood next to the driver? Uh, I don't remember if it was in his hand. I remember a bottle near his hand. I believe it was on the top of the car. Okay, okay. so you didn't see it necessarily in his hand. You can't recall that, but you did see it on top of the hood or the roof, the roof. of the car that was stopped? What kind of bottle did it appear to you to be? It looked like an uh, alcohol bottle, like, like you'd get from a, a corner or store. Something? Yeah. Okay. And did you have some reason to believe that at that, uh, that point, Officer Tenzing was going to take this driver out of the vehicle? I believed he might, yes. Okay, and, and did you give any direction to Officer Lindenschmidt at that time? I, I believe I told him that it looked like Officer, Lin, or, uh, Officer Tenshing was going to try to get him out of the vehicle, so we needed to get up there. Okay. You were going to go out and, and be there physically as backup and support? Yes. Okay. What happened as you got out? I take it you got out on the front passenger side? Yes. And uh, what happened at that point? As I was exiting the vehicle, I saw uh, Officer Tensing try to open, it looked like he was trying to open the door. Um, and then I was out of the vehicle, it looked like Officer Tensing tried to, like he lunged into the car, like he was trying to reach for something, stop something, I don't know what he was doing. Um, and then I heard tires squealing, I saw the vehicle move, Officer Tensing was moving with the vehicle. I uh, heard a gunshot, and then the vehicle was pulling away from the curb. I saw Officer Tensing fall away from the car. Okay. Did you know where that shot came from, or if, if anyone had been shot at that point? I had no idea. Okay. What did you do at that point? I started running, uh, I guess that would be south on Rice Street. I got on the radio and said, shots fired. Um, I, Officer Tensing was standing up. So I assumed he was, you know, not injured seriously. I think I yelled and asked him if the, Mr. DuBose had a gun. Did he answer that question? I don't think so. He never said anything back to you? No, he, he did get on the radio uh, and say that he had fired one shot and struck Mr. DuBose in the head. When he, when he said he fired, Tenzing got on the radio and said Tensing he fired? Tenzing did, yes. Okay. Not, not DuBose fired? Correct. Officer Tensing said that Officer Tensing fired the shot. Did he ever tell you or mention anything to you about seeing a weapon in the car or believing that DuBose had a weapon in the car? He did not. You indicated that before all this kicked off, Officer Tenzing lunged into the car. Is that correct? Yes. As part of your training, uh, Officer Kidd, what have you been instructed about lunging into the vehicle, into a stopped vehicle? That we don't reach into a car. All right, what happened? So you're running up the street, Officer Tenzing, when he fell, did he fall to his side, his back, his front? How did he land? I don't recall. Okay, so you remember that? You don't remember, uh, well, but you do remember he jumped up? He, yes, he got back to his feet. Did he have his weapon in his hand when he got to his feet? He did. And you, did you pull your weapon when you heard the shot? I did not. Okay, so you're running, he's now running up the, up Rice toward Valencia, is that correct? Yes. He has his weapon out? I believe so. Okay. And as you run, you're talking and you're asking him if he had a weapon and he doesn't answer? Correct. Okay. How, and I take it Lyndon Schmidt is behind the two of you. He's coming up, but he's not as far up the street as you two are. Yeah, I never saw Officer Lyndon Schmidt while we were running. As that car that had been stopped per, went up Rice Street, did you see it hit any objects? Yeah, it went off to the left of the road and hit a uh, guardrail. Did it cause any damage to the, that vehicle? I, I believe so. I think it pulled the bumper. Okay. Did it stop there or did it then no. continue to go yeah, up? It bounced off, the, off of the uh, guardrail, continued down Rice Street, and then came to rest in a uh, kind of like a hill right there at the corner of uh, Rice and Valencia. Up on the curb? Yes. Did you go up and look in the car? I did. And uh, did anyone that approached the car, did they, anyone ever check on the condition of the person that was in the car? We did not. Right. Did it appear to you, though, that he had been shot? Yes. In fact, and in fact, somebody uh, 
made a request with dispatch for police, more police officers, and for life squad paramedic. Am I right? That was me. Okay, you made that broadcast? I did. So it was clear that at the very least this person was very seriously injured? Yes. Where did you see, uh, did you see any wounds on the person? There was blood on his, on his head. Okay. And he was laying how in the car? He was kind of leaning over towards the passenger seat. Okay, so across that front seat area? Yes. Can I ask you this? If, a, if an officer, the University of Cincinnati Police Department, makes a traffic stop, and during the course of that stop, the driver attempts to disobey his order and tries to leave the scene, would that UC officer be justified in shooting at that person? No. On July 19, 2015, that day you worked with Officer Lyndon Schmidt, were you wearing a body camera? I was. They were issued to all UC officers, is that correct? They are. Can tell the jury just generally how it works. Um, I'm not an expert in it, but basically what we've been told is it's constantly recording. Um, once you double tap the button that's on there, it plays back 30 seconds, just video. Um, audio starts once you double tap the camera. So you're, it's an attached to your chest near your uh, left breast pocket? Yes. Okay. And it's always recording, but it only it only saves it for 30 seconds. Oh, right. So every 30 seconds it's taping over. It's losing <coughs> what it had before and I making new. So. Okay. If you want to actually start the constant recording, you've got to double tap a button on the front? Yes. Okay. And does it give an audible sound when you tap it so you know it's, it's started? It does. Okay. And then it'll continually record. It'll save that 30, first 30 seconds before you tap. It'll save that without sound, correct? Correct. And then from the time you tap, we hear an audible tone, and now it's constantly recording sound and video. Am I correct about that? Yes. Do you have pol I'm sure when the University of Cincinnati adopted the use of those body cameras, um, they have policies and procedures that you're required to follow as to when and how you turn those on. Is that correct? Correct. What were the policies in effect on July the 19th, 2015, about when you activate that body camera to record something. I don't recall what it was then. Okay. What about, would, it, would you believe that the, the policies at that time would have required you to activate that if you had a, 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 a traffic stop? Yes. Would that have been your, your policy at the time? If you made a traffic stop, you would tap that before you'd go approach the driver? Most likely. Okay. That's, isn't that the point of it, to record encounters you have with citizens? Correct. Okay. And in this situation, when did, you, when did you activate your body camera? When I was at Mr. Dubow's vehicle. Okay. Uh, after it had crashed? Yes. Okay. So when you pulled up, you didn't activate it? I did not. Uh, when you started to get out and you heard the, the tires or the shot or whatever it was that you heard, you didn't tap it then? I did not. But you thought about it only when you got up to off Mr. Dubow's crashed vehicle? Right. Okay, now I understand that was a traumatic thing. Uh, it, was that just a, you know, you got caught up in the moment and you didn't think to hit? As I was getting out of the car, things were happening so fast, correct? The, the camera was an afterthought, safety of... Okay. I understand that. Um, how long had you guys been using those body cameras? Less than a year. Okay, so still fairly new to you? Yes. Now, have you had an occasion since that date to view and listen to uh, what was caught on your body camera? Uh, I did. Okay. You actually came down at least once and sat with Mr. Pete Meyer, is that correct? Yes. And I'll show you what's marked State's Exhibit number 14. Can you identify that? Pictures, please. Uh, it says Disc 1, Kid, UCPD 71915, 18, And is that the video that we showed you and you watched and indicated was filmed that day from your, your uh, body camera? I believe so. Okay. It fairly inaccurately shows the images that you recorded.
support it? Yes. Judge, at this time we would offer State's Exhibit 14 in evidence and ask that it be played for the jury. Any Very good. It will be admitted and published. Video that the uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury saw on State's Exhibit 14 
fairly and accurately depict what happened on that day as you saw it? It does. Toward the end of that, as you and you're standing with Officer Tenson, I think you're by the passenger side of Mr. DuBose's car. He says he was dragged. And is that your voice that says, I saw that? It is. Did you actually see him being dragged? I did not. All right. Tell us why you, why you would say that. Because I saw him moving with the car. Okay. You couldn't see it because the car was between you and him, correct? I, I don't recall seeing his legs. Okay. You can't say if he was hung up, if he was attached, or anything like that, can you? I cannot. All right. Did both the Cincinnati police officers and University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati police officers respond to that scene? They did. Okay. And after discussions, it was decided that the uh, city of Cincinnati, since it was in Cincinnati, would handle the investigation? Yes. Did you, on that day, or within a couple of days, go down to the University of, or I'm sorry, to Cincinnati Police Homicide Unit for the purpose of being interviewed? I did. When was that? Uh, a couple of days after that. The, on the 21st, you think? I don't recall the date. In that interview, in, interval, were you shown any video from any of the body cameras, either from yours or Lyndon Schmidt's or Tenzing's? Tenzing's? Uh, I believe I saw mine. You saw yours? Who showed that to you? Um, I don't remember the attorney's name. That was an FOP attorney? It was. How many times did you get to view it? Once. Okay. When you got down to uh, Cincinnati Police Homicide, did you uh, give an inter to interview to some homicide investigators? I did. Would one of those have been Detective Hine? It was. I think at one point you were describing for her uh, just where this all started and where the positions of the vehicles were started, is that correct? Yes. To try to explain where you were and what you would have seen, is that correct? Correct. All right. Um, and did you draw a diagram and try to explain that? I did. Let me show you what we marked for this trial space instead of 1D and ask if you can that. That looks like the drawing I made. Okay, that would be the drawing you made. I believe so. Judge, that does it fairly and accurately reflect. I know it's not the scale, but the drawing you made in trying to show generally uh, the various locations of uh, the suspect vehicle, the tensing vehicle, and the vehicle you and the footage that were in. To the best of my knowledge, yeah. Okay. I would ask that one need be admitted and uh, present that to the jury. Very good. It'll be admitted and published. Come on over here if you would. diagram you drew on, I believe, July 21st, is that correct? It is. Now, you don't need to go to the TV. I think if you put your, use your fingers, they'll be able to see um, what you're pointing to. First off, show us where your vehicle pulled up. Where we're at about here. And that's as you're coming up Phil, you're just starting to come around onto Rice, am I correct? Correct. And where was Tenzing's vehicle? Right about this location. Okay. And the vehicle that he stopped? Okay, now, what are some of the other things that you showed on that uh, photograph to try to help the, the officers understand what happened? Uh, this would be my location. That's where you're standing when this all started? Right. Okay. 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 When he got up off the ground then? Did you estimate some how what any kind of a distance that was? Um, I believe I told him based on where the model was and where the uh, where his flashlight was. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes. But you're based, basing that on where objects were on the ground, is that correct? Yeah, those are the Okay. Okay. And you have no idea whether they were how far they went after the car took off or whether anyone kicked them or moved them or anything like that, correct? Okay. You can have a seat. Thank you. As a University of Cincinnati police officer, you had a weapon that was issued to all 
uh, duty weapon was issued to all UC police officers, did you not? Yes. Well, on uh, July the 19th, 2015, what was that, uh, that uh, service weapon that you used? Uh, SIG 320. Okay, and it's a 40 caliber? It is. Okay, and everyone used that firearm, is that correct? Yes. Did you have a uh, standard duty belt that was also issued to you? Yes. And the duty belt includes or contains a holster that would hold that weapon when you weren't using it. Am I correct? Correct. All right. You may. Let me show you what we marked for the purpose of this trial states to the 8080. Make sure that's uh, can you identify for the jurors what that is? This would be the SIG 320. Okay, it's a 40 caliber SIG Sauer correct. handgun, semi-automatic handgun. So it's a make, model, and correct caliber of what you were issued? Yes. as a University of Cincinnati police officer? Yes. If you could, could you describe um, the safety retention uh, uh, devices on that holster to hold that handgun? It has a uh, thumb brake right here and a hood. Okay. Typically, you keep the hood up, um, push it down with your thumb, push there, lift the weapon out. If you would, could you insert the handgun in the holster so we can see how that works to, to hold the, the weapon? What's the purpose of that? It's a double that retention procedure. It's just a double retention, uh, keeps the weapon securely in the holster. So if an officer wants to remove that weapon from his holster, what does he have to do? Can he pull it out if it's just like that? No. Uh, if he it does, it's locked, it won't move? Yes, it will not move. If an officer wants to remove his weapon from the holster, what would he be required to do? First, you have to push down with your thumb here, push the hood forward, and then pull back on the lever, lift the weapon out. Okay, so it's, you've got to actually make the conscious effort to make actually two motions with your thumb. Push the hood forward, push the lever backward, and then pull. Push the hood down, then forward. Okay, down, then forward? Yes. Okay. But that's something that takes actually a conscious effort to remove the gun, am I correct? Unless you train a lot with it, yes. Okay. Well, you, you are trained to, to use that weapon, aren't you? Yes. How often do you have to train as a University of Cincinnati officer with that weapon? We qualify once a year, and then we do a uh, second shoot, um, kind of a, I, I don't know what they call it, but we, we typically shoot at least twice a year. Okay, and you're, you don't just go out by yourself and shoot at targets. You actually have a, a firearms instructor that shoots, uh, oversees the training and the shooting? Yes. Okay, and as part of that training, uh, does the instructor read and have you all follow along the firearms and deadly force policies and procedures? On the first shoot, yes. Okay, so on the, on at least the qualify. Shoot, uh, firearms and deadly force. Okay, and that's actually read uh, at, at least once a year when the officers qualify, correct? Yes. Do the officers have to do anything to signify their, understand, their knowledge of and understanding of those policies and procedures? We sign a sheet. Okay. This is University of Cincinnati Police Firearms Requalification Record and General Safety Rules. And would that be a sheet that you sign after qualifying with your firearm and indicating your understanding of the firearm policies and procedures? Uh, this looks like the safety rules for the range. Okay. And every officer is required. The, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does say up here policy covering the use of firearms and deadly force policy. And does that bear a signature on that that's familiar to you? 
Uh, it has R Raymond Tensing's name on it. Okay, in, in, a, in signature form, am I correct? There's a signature at the bottom, his name at the top, printed. Okay. Correct. Thanks, Judge. That's all the questions I have. Very good, Klaus. Officer Kidd, you indicated you've been with the UCPD for nine years? Ten and a half years now. Half now, but back in July it was nine years. Um, who was your, July of 2015, it was nine years, correct? Nine and a half. Who was your chief back then? Uh, chief Goodrich. And he's no longer with the University Police Department, correct? He is not. Okay. Is it my understanding that uh, the crime was an issue of great concern to the University of Cincinnati at that time? Yes. And was there something done with reference to the police department specifically to try to address that issue? Uh, they instituted a uh, policy. Um, I don't know what they called it, but we had a blue line around campus that they wanted um, anybody that came in that zone that could uh, or that had ill intentions towards student, faculty, staff. They wanted them stopped. They wanted, uh, they wanted it known that we were there to protect our students. And when you refer to that blue line, I assume that is not the border of the university campus, is that correct? It was not. Where was it specifically? I don't remember the, the exact borders, but it was out off campus. And as part of that, or within that blue line, there were separate beats developed, is that correct? There were. And on July the 19th, were you, you were assigned to a specific beat? I was. Was there anything that said you could not leave that beat? No. What was the policy at that time with reference to, to traffic stops? If you had a reason to stop a vehicle, you could stop a vehicle. And, and what, when you say if you had a reason, what kind of reason did you need? Law, any law violation. Could you stop a vehicle because it was operated by an African American? No. Could you stop a vehicle because it was green? No. There had to be some law violation, is that correct? Correct. Um, and as a police officer, are you aware of the laws in Ohio with reference to license plates on vehicles? Yes. What does the law require? Two, for, two plates, one on the front permanently affixed, one on the rear permanently affixed. And are you familiar with the driver's licenses, driver's license laws in the state of Ohio? Yes. Um, what does the law require, basically? If you're operating a motor vehicle, you have to have a valid license and you have to have it on your person. Okay. And as a police officer with the University of Cincinnati Police Department, were you instructed by your chief or your superior officers to enforce traffic laws? Yes. Um, and that was... Part of your oath was that you would enforce the laws of the state of Ohio, correct? Correct. Did that oath, or did the policy at the University of Cincinnati say you could enforce them if you wanted to, or did it say you shall enforce them? It was more of a shall, I guess. Okay. Um, were you instructed by your superior officers to be aggressive or proactive in enforcing traffic laws? They wanted people stopped, yes. And was that a general rule that applied to all police officers? I believe so, yes. <coughs> now on July the 19th, um, well before I get to that, the University of Cincinnati Police Department furnishes its officers with uniforms, correct? They do. Um, is that with the entire uniform? Uh, they don't supply underwear, socks, boots. Is there a requirement, a particular requirement for a type of underwear that you are supposed to wear? I have to have black socks and a black undershirt and black boots that are polishable. And was that, uh, were, the, were the black undershirt specifically, is that required when you're wearing uh, your summer uniform shirt? Yes. Thank you. What do you know about the area of vine and fill? 
Uh, it's right next to Inwood Park. Um, at that time, I believe it was about two months prior, we had gotten an email uh, talking about the Thill Street Gang. Um, they had sent us a photo of a Cadillac that had been shot up with an automatic weapon and uh, just told us to be careful when you're in that area. And on July the 19th, 2015, when you heard Ray Tenzing call out that he was making a traffic stop in that area and that the car was slow to stop, did that alert you in any way? It did. And you were with Officer Lyndon Schmidt? I was. Um, and what was, what did, how were you alerted or what did it cause you to do? The slow to stop from Officer Tenzing was, was the biggest thing. And did you and Officer Kidd then, or Officer Lyndon Schmidt then decided to respond to, as backup, is that correct? We did. Is that something you would typically do? Yes. And for what purpose? Safety of the of officers. Um, and, and what does the slow to stop tell you? That the subject picking a location. Rather than the Rather stopping officer? Correct. And is that something that uh, makes you happy when the suspect, when the suspect picks the location? No. Okay. Um, okay, you indicated that you came around the bend from Rice, or from Phil on to Rice, correct? Correct. You're in the passenger seat. Yes. Did you immediately see Officer Tenzing? I did. And he was up by the the driver's side door of the vehicle he had stopped, correct? He was. Did you see the bottle that you referred to in your earlier testimony? On the roof of the vehicle, yes. Okay, and could you tell what that was at that point? I could not. What, what was the first thing you observed when you saw Officer Tenzing? The bottle was the first thing I'd noticed. Did he have his weapon withdrawn from his holster? No, I don't believe so. Do you frequently make traffic stops? I do. Well, I did. That's no longer the policy you see, correct? No. Okay. Um, when you made a traffic stop, you demonstrated the hood on the holster. What did you usually do with reference to that hood? Depends on the stop. Okay, well, give me an example. Would, did you ever flip the hood down? I, there were times, yes. And, and what was the reason for doing that? If, like in this instance, vehicle didn't stop where, you know, immediately. Um, if I ran the plate and it came back with felony warrants, uh, obviously you'd be chopping the hood on that one. Um, if the, you run the plate and it lights up officer safety or, you know, anything like that, but no warrants, you'd probably still drop the hood. And you indicated that when a driver picks the spot to stop rather than stopping when he's first signaled to, you would drop the hood? I would. Okay. Um, and what does that do? It's just one less thing that you have to do if you were to have to draw your weapon. Okay. And you indicated that uh, to drop that hood, I think I heard you say it takes some physical action on your part, correct? It does. And it's something that I, I think your language was uh, unless you unless you train a lot, you have to think about it. Right. If if you don't do it a lot, then the muscle memory is not there. So yes, you would have to actually consciously do it. So if you train a lot, does that are you say, telling the jury here that it's kind of an instinctive move? Correct. You don't have to think about it. Yeah, muscle memory. Okay. Um, now, I don't know if I asked you, did you see Officer Tenzing's weapon drawn when you pulled around the corner onto, onto Ray Street? I did not. Did you, do you know whether it was drawn or not? I don't believe it was. I think I saw his hand at one, his right hand at one point up near the, the roof of the vehicle and there was, there was no weapon in it. Okay. And do you know that Officer Tenzing shoots with his right hand? Yes. Okay. And you just looked down where you, what was that about? Just looking at his belt. Okay, you can tell from his gun belt what hand he shoots with, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, 
Now, I believe you indicated that you told Officer Lyndon Schmidt, it looks like he's getting out, getting him out. We better get up there, correct? Correct. And why was that? Just the more bodies you have when somebody's getting, you know, being escorted out of a vehicle, the safer it is. And so you and Officer Lyndon Schmidt, or I'm not going to have you speak for Officer Lyndon Schmidt, but you quickly got out of the cruiser, correct? I did. Out of the passenger side front seat? Yes. And what did you do? I started walking, well, as I was getting out is when I saw Officer Tensing kind of lunge into the vehicle, um, well, reach for the door handle and then lunge into the vehicle. So I, at that point I was running. Did you have, did you see what caused Officer Tensing to lunge into the vehicle? I did not. Could you tell when you drove up whether the vehicle was, was running, whether the engine was started? I didn't pay attention. Um, did you hear the engine start when you observed him reaching for the door? I did not. Okay. But for some reason he lunged into the vehicle? Yes. And at that point, I believe you testified, if I heard you correctly, that you heard squealing tires, correct? Correct. What, did, what way did the vehicle travel, do you know? It was uh, south on Rice and away from the, the curb. So did, did you see, did, had you observed a car parked in front of the DuBose vehicle when you arrived on the scene? I've seen the video. I know there was one, but I don't remember that car being there. Okay, but you... you saw the DuBose car turn to the left. And yes. Well, where was Officer Tenzing at that point? Still at the driver's side. Now, at, when, when this was all over at Rice and Valencia, Officer Tenzing told you I was being dragged. Yes. And you responded to him, yeah, I saw that, correct? Correct. And today you're saying you didn't actually observe him being dragged. I right? didn't see his legs. Okay, and why was that? I, I just don't recall seeing his legs. Okay. Um, did you see him somehow attached to the car? He was moving with the car. And you're not able to say how he was moving with the car? No. Did you see him running? Did no. Did you see him walking? No. Did you see him uh, running backward, moving backwards? No. Officer Kidd, would I be correct to say that this all happened in a split second? Yes. Can you estimate how long? Uh, two, three seconds, maybe. When you heard the, the tire squealing, were you able to estimate how fast the car was traveling? No. Was it, was it slowly rolling? Uh, slowly. Tire squealing usually means it's not getting traction. And, and at some point, you saw Officer Tenzing disengage from the car? Yes. Was he in the same place where you saw him initially? No. And were you able to estimate how far up the, I assume he was farther south on, on Rice Street? Yes. And was he more to, toward the middle of the street? He was. Do you know how he got there? I don't. Would it have been from the recoil of firing his weapon? No. I believe you indicated that you saw Officer, in your interview, you saw Officer Tenzing falling backwards. Is that right? As he was disengaging from the car, yes. This was, was this after you had heard the shot? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you started to run down Rice Street toward the, in the direction that DeBose car had gone, is that right? Yes. Did you observe while you were doing that the bottle that you had seen on the roof of the car? No. You weren't paying attention looking for that? No. Did you see Officer Tenzing's flashlight laying in, on Rice Street? No. Did you ever observe those items? After the incident, yes. Okay, now, you're, you're, OPADA, you're certified by OPADA, is that right? I am. What is OPADA? It's the Ohio Peace Officers Training Academy. And is that an academy that every police officer in the state of Ohio has to attend and graduate from in order to be a police officer? Yes. Are you familiar with their, their training manual? Ten years ago. Okay. Do you, would you agree with me that it says that an officer should never reach into a car with their dominant hand? Yes. 
Do you think, would I be correct in saying that if, what that means is if you're going to reach into a car, you should do it with your non-dominant hand? Yes. And what, what is a non-dominant hand? For our purpose, it's the hand that you do not fire your weapon with. Thank you. When you make a, a traffic stop and decide to get somebody out of the car, is there a, a single procedure that you use to do that? No. What are some of the ways to do it? Uh, I've seen guys open a car door, make them turn around and handcuff them while they're in the car. I've seen guys open the car door, let them step out on their own. I mean, there's, there's many different ways. There's no one size fits all, is that correct? No. And it, it is, is it determined based on each particular situation? Sometimes. Sometimes it's the officer. When you got down to Rice and Valencia Street, were you able to observe Officer Tenzing? Yes. What, if anything, did you observe about him? Uh, he was, um, at least to me, he appeared kind of shaken up. Um, he was, I believe he was shaking his arm. Uh, obviously, he said that he had, he had been drugged. And did you see any physical injuries on or about his person? I did not. Um, and how about on his uniform? Um, at some point, I don't remember if I saw it or someone else pointed it out, but there were uh, there's like a white mark on the back of his uniform. Okay. Um, during your career, have you ever reached into a car? I have. Despite what you testified before that you're not supposed to? Yes. Um, is that something that officers do on a regular basis? I can't speak for everyone, but I have. Okay. Um, you testified, I believe, that uh, Ray Tenzing or, or was not justified in shooting someone leaving the scene of a traffic stop. Is that correct? If that's the only thing that's going on, then yes. Okay. What if an officer is, is being assaulted or in fear of his life or, or bodily harm? If, they're, if he's in fear for his life, I believe that that would justify it. May I have just a moment, Judge? Take your time. Thank you. says that you should never shoot at a moving car, is that correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, is it your understanding that you can shoot at a, a threat, is that correct? Correct. Are you ever taught to shoot to kill somebody? We're taught to stop the threat. Thank you, sir. You indicated that when you went down to uh, 824 Broadway Street here to talk to the Cincinnati Police Homicide Detectives and give your interview that you had previously watched your video. Is that right? I believe so, yeah. And you said that you were shown that by an FOP attorney? Yes. That wasn't me, correct? It was not. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. Very good. Redirect. Uh, I asked a question before about what was on that video in the scene or in the, what we see in the video is up by Valencia. Um, Tenzing says to you, I was being dragged and I was afraid I'd be pulled under. You said I saw that. Correct. Mr. Matthews asked you today, you've changed. That's not true, is it? In fact, two days after, two days after this incident, you were in, interviewed by uh, Detective Hine and her partner, Detective McGuffey, is that correct? Yes. And did you not tell them in, in that very statement that you didn't actually see whether he was dragged or not? You saw him moving and you saw the car moving? Correct. Okay. So it's not something that just you just came up with today? No. Okay. And um, you indicated reasons that might 
cause you to have to make a traffic stop with the hood down on your weapon. If I could approach and show you what we marked as States Exhibit Number 15, that appear to be a uh, screenshot from an MDC uh, video. It does. Okay, and it's out of the flag uh, that a certain license was run. Yes. What what license was queried on that? Uh, George Lincoln Nora 6917. Does that indicate an owner of the car? Uh, Deshonda Reed. And does that indicate her driving status in the state of Ohio? Suspended. All right. Does it do you indicate that if it lights up red, officer safety? Um, is that is that lit up in red as officer safety on it? That is not. You indicated that you might have the hood on your uh, weapon down if it indicates felony warrants. Does it indicate any felon, felony warrants for anyone using that car? It does not. Thank you, sir. Further questions? Regress. Officer, give uh, when you run from the answer to this or in response to Mr. Gibson's latest question, you know, I think you indicated when I asked you that, that it depends on the circumstance whether you drop that hood, correct? Correct. Yes. Very good. <clears throat> you may step down, officer. Is this witness excused? Yes, sir. You are free to leave. Any objection to that? No, Mr. Okay. Thanks. I think this is a good time to take a break. You do have further witnesses today. Okay, great. We're going to take about a 15-minute break. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please remember the admonition. Do not discuss this case among yourselves. Do not allow anyone to discuss it with you. Do not form or express an opinion until the case is finally submitted to you. All rise for the jury. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Anything on behalf of the state before we break? Yes. Anything on behalf of the defense before we break? Very good. Fifteen minutes. Do what?